Hello there, welcome back to the Furthering Adventures of Behind the Door. For those of you who are new here uh, to the channel, I'm Kevin O'Donnell, coming to you today from my studio on the shores of Lake Michigan in beautiful Door County, Wisconsin. You know, it's been a while since I made a video here. As we leave the one year behind and ring in an uncertain but hopeful new year, I wanted to close out my photographic year with a, a rewind of sorts. <laughs> What a day. What a day. So some of the highlights that occurred in 2023. And I went through all of my photos from last year and selected 10 of my favorites that I'd like to share with you too and why I consider them to be among my, the best work I've done in the year. There's a lot of reasons behind that decision. And at this point in my 25 year plus photography journey, that more often than not, anymore has to do with the execution and the work that went behind in getting the photo. Oh, damn. And make sure you stay tuned to the end because uh, later on we're going to get to my favorite photo of the year out of those 10. And I'm going to make a print of it here in my studio. And I'm going to give it away to one of you, a subscriber. So at the top of my list for highlights, last year were three photo trips that I made, one to Alaska in March, and then along the shores of Lake Superior in June with my wife. Is that, okay, is it... Uh huh, let's see. It's, that's perfect. <laughs> you look great. And then again, a solo trip to the North Shore of Superior in Minnesota just this past November. Most, but not all of these 10 favorite photos that I've selected happen to be part of a photo excursion, which I made videos about. So I'll provide the link below in the description section here of this video so you can check out all the details that went into creating so, those photos. Yeah, the thing we've been battling here, cloud cover. Happened to drive hundreds and hundreds of miles just to find clear skies. So the beginning of my annual photographic calendar uh, kicks off in mid-January, uh, just about a week from now, when the annual layup of the Winter Fleet comes into Sturgeon Bay. It's a time when uh, the Great Lakes freighters lumber in off the icy waters of the lake and starting in about mid-December, but there's no ice this year, so they're going to stay out as long as they can, probably come in around mid-January. And they'll stay until late March for maintenance and repairs and inspections at Finn Cantieri Bay Shipbuilding Company here in Sturgeon Bay. Now, last year's layup saw 12 boats make their way off the lakes for their long winter's nap, and I was actually able to document eight of them. They come, they come in at all times of the day and night, so uh, catching them can be kind of tricky. And they joined six other vessels that were already there, new boats under construction and others in extended layup, bringing the total amount for 2022-2023 winter season to 18, which is a full house over there at FBS. And one of my 10 favorite photos of the year came on New Year's Day, 2023, when the 1,004 foot Edwin Gott entered through the Sturgeon Bay Ship Canal just after sunrise. And judging from the amount of views that that video has received, I have to say that it was probably a favorite among viewers like you as well. I took a lot of photos that day um, and a lot of keepers, but the one photo that stood out above all the others for me was when the God had just entered the Sturgeon Bay Ship Canal at the U.S. Coast Guard Station. This above and behind perspective shows not only the enormity of the boat itself, but just how narrow the 135-year-old and 165-foot-wide man-made canal looks from the perspective of the captain, located seven stories above the waves at the stern of the boat, nearly a thousand feet from the bow, the nearest view that he has of the water is a quarter mile out in front. And to add another level of difficulty, throw in a dense fog just to make things interesting. I have seen these freighters enter the canal dozens and dozens of times, and I'm always amazed at just how effortless these mariners make it look. In early March, I flew to Fairbanks, Alaska, and I met up with several other photographers for nine days 
of adventure, a lot of adventure. <laughs> and one of the highlights of that trip, and I'd have to say one of the biggest thrills in my lifetime, was dog sledding through the forests of the Alaska Range. Amazing. These dogs, all they want to do is run. They're just so eager to run. Gotta watch where you step. Like an e-ticket ride at Disneyland. <laughs> That's a pretty sharp turn. Well, say hello, Sim. Hi. And all these dogs want to do is run and please you, right? Yeah. That's it. So you tell them which direction to take there. Yep. And they know. And it's not like you have planes or anything to direct them like a horse, right? So it's all verbal commands. Yeah. How many years will a dog run for? I have a couple that are going till they're 11. A lot of them retire at 10. So here's a crazy fact most people don't know about sled dogs. They're so eager to run. They have no time to slow down and go to the bathroom, so they just go while they're running, which, let me tell you, um, you're made aware of it. You gotta keep your eyes open from any incoming. Funny, they don't tell you that on the brochure. Everybody should do this. <laughs> Frozen salmon. They don't mind. Man, that was beyond awesome. That was fantastic. Fantastic. One of the highlighted adventures of my life, I would have to say. And on a sunny, below zero degree Fahrenheit day, all in oil, along the Dalton Highway, oil products, less than 50 miles from the Arctic Circle, we came upon a remarkable sight. And the second of my 10 favorite photos of the year. All right, I'm gonna take this shot here now, shooting at uh, 160th of a second, F8, ISO 100, and uh, 70 to 200 millimeter lens at uh, 70 millimeters. Here we go. Stunning, <laughs> stunning. If I don't get another photo this whole trip, Love it. Love it. Woo. Like a forest draped in marzipan, as far as the eye could see, it just became an embarrassment of riches with compositions everywhere I looked. It was difficult to select just one photo that best represented the day and the location and, and how I felt in that moment. It was really an ethereal and magical day and one that I'm not likely to forget or probably never experience again either. And that's what this photo does for me. It brings back the euphoria that I felt that otherworldly afternoon near the top of the world. And it instantly ignites my senses of emotions that I experienced in that moment. And you know, that's one of the great gifts that photography brings to my life and how moments like this are such an important part of maintaining healthy mental and physical well-being. This is unbelievable. It's like something 
out of uh, the Grinch who stole Christmas. We met a lot of interesting people on our journeys. So we like to think that this was one of the original cabooses from the Alaska. We witnessed some amazing, amazing sights. Dined in some uniquely appointed restaurants. <laughs> Made a few beer runs to the local upscale liquor store. And while well, we packed in a lot of adventure and traveled more than 2,000 miles on ice covered crisscrossing roads all throughout the Alaskan wilderness, including a visit to Chena Hot Springs, uh, which I absolutely loved. The temperature is about five degrees outside, above zero. And uh, this water is, I think they said 112 degrees. So it feels fantastic. Then there was this mile and a half hike out to the ice caves running beneath the Kastner Glacier. It was brutally cold and really windy. Give you an idea how narrow this trail is. If I step two feet to my right, this is what happens. So you have to stay on the narrow trail. One foot in front of the other, essentially. But once we got there, it was like stepping into a kaleidoscope. The colors that were emitted from the rocks were embedded in the ice. The soft curves of the walls worn smooth by the flow of melting snows during the, the summer months. Uh, the clarity of the ice, and it just reminded me of kind of hand-cut Waterford crystal. And above the arching domed ceiling in various patterns and textures, it rose to like a hundred feet overhead. And I felt so small and insignificant, like I was standing alone in the, at the 50 yard line in the Superdome. It was, it was an amazing architectural space to be in. And because it was one of the most hard earned images I have ever been awarded with, not just on that trip, it made the list of my 10 favorite photos of the year. Now, one evening, a few weeks after returning from Alaska, I received a notification on my phone from a friend saying that the forecast for northern light visibility in Door County was highly probable that night. So uh, I stepped outside here to see, you know, the sky was clear and uh, checked that the moon would set just before midnight, so it would be a nice dark sky. And I packed up my gear and drove down to the Sturgeon Bay Ship Canal Land Trust. And I spent the next four hours taking photos of the most intense and spectacularly animated displays of the Aurora that I'd ever seen, even in Alaska. At times it stretched completely overhead and to the horizon in all directions. And this was another instance where choosing just one photo was really difficult. So uh, I had so many to choose from. So before we continue, I want to take a minute here to respond to some of the comments that you left when I asked in a couple of previous videos um, if you would leave your opinions on some photo comparisons I posted because I was torn between which one I liked better over the other. And oddly enough, they were images that were taken of the same subject only six months apart, and that was of the Split Rock Lighthouse on Lake Superior. The first were of a sunrise shoot, and I couldn't decide which I liked better. Well, the comments that you left were wonderful. They were very kind and very flattering, and, and I just want to let you know that yeah, I may not always acknowledge your comments promptly, <laughs> but I do read them. I do read them all, and uh, I share many of them with my wife, Colleen, and we both really appreciate the time that you take leaving those comments, and we're very grateful that you find so much pleasure uh, both in my photos and uh, these little video vignettes that I do. The second set of photos was from uh, the tribute to the Edmund Fitzgerald at the Split Rock Lighthouse. And here were the choices. Uh, number one was the one with the beam reaching out over the lake uh, and no people in the foreground. And image number two was with some photographers and onlookers in the midground and the beam of the rotating light shining directly toward me. Now the results on this one weren't even close. And I'd have to agree with the majority here. Number one is by far my favorite too. 
I included it then in my top 10 photos of the year. In May, I made a day trip to the other side of the Bay of Green Bay to capture a ship launch at Fincantieri Marinette Marine in Marinette, Wisconsin. Now, that particular boatyard has built over 1,500 ships just for the U.S. Navy since 1942. And on this particular day, uh, there was going to be a historic event. It would be the last side launch at the shipyard into the Menominee River. Now, side launches or sliding down a ramp or a sled are always risky business, and timing is very critical. Uh, and in my long photographic career, I have never captured a potentially life-threatening moment uh, through my lens. Uh, and this ship launch, well, it changed all that. It was a beautiful spring morning, and a few thousand folks had crowded around the shores of the Menominee River to witness the, the floating of uh, a new Freedom Class littoral combat ship, or LCS. This was LCS 31. A lot of people here which uh, when completed, in fact it was just completed, uh, would be renamed the USS Cleveland. looked like when the boat came down the ramp and I have I have uh, my video going here it looked like it might have hit the William C. Gaynor Doug uh, we heard a big crash like it might have uh, hit the back of the, the tug we'll see now thankfully no one was injured in the incident and I was fortunate to capture the precise moment when the gunnel of the LCS-31 struck the transom of the William C. Gaynor. Shipwrecks were an all too familiar event among 18th and 19th century mariners on the Great Lakes. And uh, in Lake Michigan alone, there have been over 1,500 vessels lost and more than 300 of them have been located. And along the seven mile stretch of sweeping clay banks here where I live, uh, there have been no less than 18 schooners and scows and steamers and tugs lost in sudden storms, sailing mishaps, hidden shoals, fog, and shifting sands. Uh, and back-to-back -back days here of perfectly calm and clear water uh, during the spring months are exceedingly rare. But it allows for, in the cold water, for the, the suspended settlements to, sediments to settle out and it affords a wonderful opportunity uh, to launch the drone and scour the waters and looking for submerged limestone outcrops uh, and shipwrecks. And in this past May, I located the remnants of a double-masted schooner called the Ida H. Bloom, about just 400 yards here from my front door uh, in nine feet of water. It was discovered uh, in 1966, but other than that, there's not a whole lot known uh, of her sailing history on the lakes. She was built in Detroit in 1864. She was 85 feet long, had a 20 foot beam and a five foot draft, and she, she weighed in at 90 gross tons. Her ownership exchanged hands at least four different times. She capsized uh, in Lake Erie her first year out, but was returned to service shortly thereafter. Then on November 20th in 1879, while taking on a load of wood and ties from the Roberts Dock, which is here in Clyde Banks, just on the corner here, the Ida H. Bloom was hit with a sudden turn of weather, well, as November is famously known to do, right? Uh, and it became very windy, and the captain ordered to weigh anchor and tried to depart the dock, but became lodged uh, right here atop this limestone <laughs> reef. 
The vessel quickly began breaking up as she was repeatedly pummeled by the rough seas in just a few feet of water and just a few feet from the dock. With her fate sealed, the crew abandoned the vessel and uh, the storm lasted for a few days and it made recovery just totally unfeasible. So here she rests, still atop that limestone reef and earning a place of recognition as one of my most cherished photos of 2023. The next two photos both came from uh, a summer trip that Colleen and I took exploring the shores of Lake Superior back in June. We traveled up the North Shore as far as uh, Grand Marais, uh, Minnesota, and then back down again and uh, around cutting across uh, northern Wisconsin and eventually ending up uh, at Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Photography was great, oar boats, nightscapes, lighthouses, and lots of hiking and um, it was a wonderful trip and I was able actually to create three different videos from our adventures. Again, the links to those will be down below here in the description. We hiked numerous waterfalls along the way and one of my absolute favorites was Copper Falls uh, in Copper Falls State Park, named after the Copper Culture Indian tribes that occupied this particular area of Northwest Wisconsin back in the day. Uh, my friend and poet, Ralph Murray, refers to this region as the big land of took away. Took away iron, copper, silver. Took away first growth timber and first nations people. Took away everything of value. But the invaluable remains, flourishes. The river flows, the trees grow. A few people eke out a life. Hundred and seventy-five miles to the east of Copper Falls, in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, on the waterfront near downtown Marquette, stands the one thousand foot long Lower Harbor Ore Dock. Built in 1931 and closed 40 years later when it was replaced, this rustic relic stands in silent testimony to the city's maritime and mining past. I set out to capture a minimalist version of it, desaturate the color, make it semi-abstract, using a long exposure reflecting its weathered history. I really enjoyed my day out there photographing this monolith, which is why it made my top 10 for 2023. And finally, back here in Door County, I went, uh, I went out one rainy foggy morning in October to photograph uh, an arbored stretch of road near my home here that I've had my eye on for quite a few years, but have, as always, <laughs> been waiting for the right conditions. So the bright autumn colors were just at their peak, and uh, we had this kind of days-long drizzle and fog, and it saturated the foliage and the pavement, and it weighed down all the branches and boughs, and I was just so pleased with how this image turned out. For those of you who have never had the good fortune of visiting Door County, this for me captures the, the simple natural beauty, the tranquility, and really the essence of um, our beloved peninsula. So that's it. Those are my 10 favorite images for 2023. Now the question is, which one of these is my personal favorite? Do you care to make a guess? I've just printed it out on my Epson 9100 photo printer on Anamule Fine Art Photo Rag Paper. And I'll be giving this signed limited edition image away to one of you viewers. And all you have to do to be eligible to do this is uh, have me ship this to your door at no charge, is click the subscribe button below if you're not already a subscriber. Subscribing costs you nothing. Uh, and when you click on that button, you'll see a pull down menu and click on the all. Uh, which means that uh, you will receive notifications for all my new videos that come down the pike. And the last thing you have to do, and it's very important, 
is to click on the thumbs up icon below. Uh, it's very helpful to me. It gets my videos placed in uh, more YouTube feeds and at a higher rate and uh, it helps me grow my audience. And uh, also you could leave a comment if you like. I do appreciate your comments, you know that. So I went with an 11 by 14, it'll frame up nicely. Um, I actually made the print size 10.625 by um, 13.625. So it'll fit nicely in a matte board here with just a little edge showing all the way around. So yeah, I'm very pleased with the way this turned out. Yeah, I'll just trim it up and then uh, we'll see who the lucky winner is. So once you've done that, just shoot me an email at, at this address below here, kodophoto55 at gmail.com and inform me that you have become a subscriber or that you are one and that uh, you've clicked on the new release uh, notification so that you get email alerts and that, uh, and that you've given this video a thumbs up. And if you would please put uh, these words split rock into the subject line so that I can separate and sort them from my other email. I'd appreciate that. You'd save me a ton of work, a ton of time. So let's make the deadline for this um, January 31st. And then uh, on February 1st, I will randomly select a winner and email the winner back so that we can coordinate how I can ship this photo out to you the first week of February. That's it. Simple. And oh, I want to reassure you that I in no way am I aggregating or sharing or selling or doing anything with these emails uh, that you provide to me other than selecting a winner. I'll, I'll delete all of the emails right after I contact the winner. So no worries there. All right. I wish you all a safe and happy new year. Thank you for watching and good luck if you're going to enter the contest here. And for those of you who have been asking, winter layup will be coming upon us here in the next week or so. So those are my next videos. And until then, I just want to say thank you for watching. Take care of yourselves. And I'll see you down the road. Take care, everyone. Take the whole thing again. Hello there. Welcome back. Be hopeful for a, 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 a good... <laughs> Make sure you stay tuned because uh, it... <laughs> Take it again. All of it. Hello there and welcome back to the furthering adventures of Behind the Door. Why did that jump? Take it again. And on a sunny below degree day. And on a sunny below degree... Ugh, oh, you idiot. Stop. Go back. Less than 50 miles from the Arctic. Uh, less than 50... God bless it. And more than 300 of them uh, have been located. And... Uh, <laughs> no, that's stupid. Located. Located. And along this seven mile stretch here, uh, called the Clay Banks, uh, where I live. Uh, of course, it's where I live. I just showed them. <sighs> and along the seven mile stretch of sweeping clay banks here, where I live, the bones, <laughs> no. Take it again. You idiot. 1,000 foot long lower heart uh, see this is what happens it's weathered history finally back here damn it okay here we go take 28 this is gonna be a bitch to edit